Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Tips and Mints podcast with Sia and Pip. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. So this episode is just going to be a really quick one in the lead up to Edinburgh Yarn Festival because it's a little bit crazy, kind mm-hmm. of lots going on and we just thought we'd give you a little bit of an update before we, you know, do a huge post EYF episode afterwards. If my voice sounds a bit funny, I do apologise. I've got a bit of a cold, so you might have to put up with me sounding a little bit like a boy whose voice is currently breaking. You do not sound that bad. She does not sound that bad, does she, guys? Like, seriously. (laughs) Honestly. So it's not the microphone, it's just me. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you sound like you're breaking up with people. (laughs) It's not you, audience. It's us. (laughs) (laughs) So for that reason, I'm also not drinking anything this time. I apologise. Mm. Sometimes. So this time, it all just lands on Sia's very capable shoulders. <clears throat> capable, that that's the word. I've not really been that great with the whole, like, tipsy part of the tipsy nips thing. So this episode, I'm back on the beer, and because I am a massive, massive child, I've gone for ginger beer. Woohoo! So when I was wee, I vaguely recall my dad occasionally, like, getting bottles of Hobgoblin. I think. I could have just made that up and kind of gone, small me remembers seeing these bottles on the shelves and being like, why is my dad buying this other thing? There's a goblin on that. So I got that. I got this today and it's called Hobgoblin Gold. So it's apparently gilt edged golden beer. I'm not going to lie. I mostly wanted it for the goblin on the label because why not? Yeah. And in all honesty, guys, it tastes of absolutely nothing. Really? I'm not getting ginger. I'm not really getting beer. It's just like drinking coloured water. Oh. Yeah. It doesn't even smell of ginger. Let's smell that pip. Sniff it. Mm, I can smell a little bit. It smells a little bit like when I'm walking to work and the uh, the wind is coming in from the direction of the tenant's factory. I'm not even getting that and I love walk- I love going past the tenant's factory. <laughs> I don't like tenants. I just really like the smell. Can but I have a try? Yeah, go for it. Me not supposed to be drinking. Yeah. I'm such an enabler, such a good friend. You see what I mean? It just doesn't taste of anything. It's got like the beer edge, but it's quite. It's not beery beery. I'm um, getting maybe a very, very slight aftertaste of a tiny hint of ginger. But I would say that. it's probably not as bad as other beers that I've drunk. Yeah, it's not as bad as some of the previous ones. But in all honesty, I think this the dangerous thing about this is it tastes of nothing. So I'd probably be able to knock it back without noticing. Mm hmm. So yeah. So hey ho not- guys, I'll, I'll try another one, like. So it's not bad, it's just meh. I think basically what I need to do is stop buying beer out of the supermarket and maybe like go down to Hippo Beers. Mm-hmm. So like we've got Hippo Beers, which is a shop near us, and they do like cool beer from around the world, and I think they've got their own stuff as well, so. Well, they might, you might be able to say to them, I like this, this and this, and they might be able to recommend yeah. you something. I mean, in honesty, like, I've got a Canadian boyfriend, I should probably be like, dude, Give me some Canadian beer. <laughs> I mean, mm, import. <laughs> Exotic. Oh, I know, right. I don't know, just be like, what would you drink while you're watching the hockey? <laughs> Speaking of hockey, randomly, yeah. Yeah. our local team was in the news recently. What for this time? We've moved into fourth on the Elite League. Oh, yes, so we have. Go yeah. Bray Head Clan. I have a feeling, right, it's because we've not been watching. I feel like every time we go to watch, we're actually like almost a negative influence <laughs> yeah they always lose every but, single time but yeah they have they have been doing really well like there was a match the other day and it was like eight five, five. yeah like they trounced five flyers yes yeah and they've had a lot of team players off like injured and stuff as well so actually mm. yeah but yeah that's just a random aside for you guys yeah apparently now this this uh podcast <laughs> involves ice hockey ice hockey thought. yeah <laughs> but moving on yeah from get, that. Get, getting back on track We'll talk to you about what we have on and off the needles. Yep. So, on the needles, I've still got quite a bit because apparently I can't do monogamous knitting. Me neither, so it's fine. So, in the past couple of weeks since we last recorded, I've not finished my Chester Basin mittens. They're sat in a project bag on my coffee table. Mm -hmm. I'll get to them eventually, but the weather started getting nice, so... yeah. That and amazing news, guys. So you know how last episode I'd lost one of my mittens? One yeah. of my fantastic Rusty Ferret Thule mm. mittens. I found it! Yay! So I went to work and randomly on the railings next to the door, so, so soggy from rainwater, was my mitten. 
Amazing. And the thing is, I've been going into work every week solidly since like that week in December when I lost it, and it wasn't there. So Maybe one so, of the landscapers or something found it. So yeah, someone on campus, whoever you are, found it, put it on the railings, and it was there for me one Monday morning to find, and I've never been so happy. So Yay! I've been wearing those mittens with pride. I am absolutely neurotic as heck with them now <laughs> and i need to now like block the other, the second mitten the one that i didn't lose because i had to obviously you know give it a good wash after i found you know the one that i lost so it's now slightly bigger than the other not drastically but yeah so. it's been on an adventure yeah i'd love to know uh, would, would i you, love to know <laughs> would you really love to know i don't know i feel like it's just been on campus for the past month and a half and mm. it's just you know been chilling somewhere I guess. maybe it was like in a bush or something who knows but i've been reunited with my mittens so at the moment i don't need to quite finish my chester basin ones yet what else have i got so at the moment i'm sat here with a absolute behemoth of a shawl it's it's um, huge. yeah so it's find your fade by andrea Murray. so dre renee knits and my god guys it's huge well, and it is it's an absolute beast like this is possibly the biggest thing i've ever knitted and i didn't think that was possible well, you sat knitting on it. Yeah. And it was also covering me at the yeah. same time. Yeah, like, this is, it's not a shawl, it's a blanket. But it is one of the best stash busty knits I've ever ever gone for. So, like, I've been actually, you know, going with my New Year's resolution to work through my stash. And, yeah, it's it's so easy. It's just garter stitch and then sort of some garter stitchy lace, striping colours, and it is the most forgiving thing I've ever knit because... Yeah, there are bits where I've accidentally forgotten to actually start lace knitting, so I've just carried on doing gas stitch. Or there are bits where I've run out of the yarn that I was using because, you know, I was knitting from stash. Yeah. So I'm currently playing yarn chicken with another colour. <laughs> so I've used way more than the seven that you're meant to, but yeah, it's been it's been great. I'm loving it. And I'm on the last two sections. I'm on the penultimate section. Nice. So I had hoped to finish it by this episode, but I haven't. And then the other thing I've got on my needles is a Brolly shawl, which is from one of the earlier Pom Pom magazines. Mm -hmm. And I'm knitting, what am I knitting that in? I'm knitting it in some Rusty Ferret Wink. Ooh. Love that base. Thank you, Leona. It's beautiful. And some Rainbow Heirloom. It's the Merino Singles. Merino yarn. <laughs> I should have checked this before I started recording. Sorry, guys. And yeah, I just basically started knitting that because on... Uh, a specific day in January, which I won't name, while there were other women out marching, I couldn't go, but at the end of the day I was like, I desperately need to cast on something, because I was just tired and frustrated and angry, and yeah, I cast it on, so it's kind of been sort of like my wee subversive knitting project. Nice. Yeah, just like sitting and knitting garter stitch that just does increases on every rose and goes back and forth and stripes, it's so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing. What about you, Pip? Well, I'm still knitting my Yarn Quest scarf. I did at one point catch up mm -hmm. and then I had a little bit of a oh no um I wasn't very well for a while I had a migraine with oh yeah you did you had like... yeah I had I had a headache for about three days I then had a migraine and then I had a, a headache for the next week so I was pretty much mm -hmm. down for the count for about 10 to 11 days so uh, I didn't get much done then but You're I'm okay now? okay now I've got one and a half clues left and I love it i really love it it is looking so beautiful and i i'm just i'm really chuffed because never in a million years would i have thought one that i'd be double knitting yeah. and two that i'd be able to do something like that i mean yeah you took to it so quickly as well like because i know you're quite worried but actually yeah and it's actually quite funny because it's helped me in terms of other knitting I'm much better at counting stitches as yeah. I knit them now. I don't get lost because with the double knitting, obviously, you do two stitches for one stitch, if yeah. that makes sense. So I've become a lot better at counting and all that. It's, it's, and it's, I just, I'm really, really loving it. I feel like now that you've done that, you're probably going to take to two colour brioche quite well. We'll see. I'll have like, to try. I'd be, like, I'd be surprised if you found it difficult or even intimidating because if you can do that, I'd imagine yeah. well, two I'm, colour brioche. I think it's quite easy fine. because it's literally just like straight rows there's no yeah. increasing there's no decreasing there's no yarn overs nothing it's just knit to the end of the row yeah. per, uh, slip the last stitch pair yeah knit back like it's quite That's simple pretty cool um but i i've got all my charts laid out so i know what i'm going to be knitting for the neck until the end and i'm super excited yay speaking of which tanny richter who is the designer 
has decided that it's been so much fun that she's going mm-hmm. to she has in fact released a giant collection of so there's the main quests yeah as well as side quests oh so, that appeals to the gamer in me yeah hats gloves more scarves a blanket so yes yep. i have bought that collection and i am super excited to roll oh, you know, that's new gonna characters be so cool. and to do all of that so i'm i'm really looking forward to it it's going to be awesome definitely on my list for EOA, EOA yeah. have to buy for even if it's just the hat and mitts pattern um, that sounds doable i've also cast on a scraps blanket which is literally just scraps of like sock weight mm-hmm. yarn so fingering weight yarn i'm just gonna knit them into mitred squares mm-hmm. 48 stitches cast on and that's it i'm just gonna knit a bunch of them because i've got loads of leftover bits and pieces of yarn sounds good to me so that's that's gonna be happening that is a long term project test shawl still going don't know when that's gonna happen it'll be fine just whatever <laughs> um, i'm also testing a pair um of mitts for the lovely amanda collins yeah b collins so i think amanda and claire have both announced claire divine that is have announced on their uh, marvel groups they've got a joint project coming out yes. at some point so watch this space guys because i'm sure it's going to be some gorgeous stuff in there yep and i'm using my stash exploration for that good job so i am knitting it in a, a skein of la bien Amy merino singles in dire wolf graffiti oh and guys it is beautiful oh it's just the pattern and the yarn work together so well and that's all i'm gonna say about it in terms of cast off something that i forgot to mention last time i did cast off a little lush yep you did for, uh, for a friend's daughter that will eventually get to her at some point oh well, yeah that's um, a good point you've not given it to it's them yet. yeah the pattern is by tin can knits and the yarn is ice yarns in magic light mm-hmm. and it's really nice kind of pastel colors yeah. my dad bought me like 20 skeins of it for christmas <laughs> a couple of years ago it's really really nice yarn it's nice and soft it looks really good but i have no use for that amount of quantity so it's probably going to end up going to oxfam uh, but i really enjoyed knitting with it it's not beautifully as well it's yeah sort of, it's sort of like a self-striping yarn isn't it mm-hmm. and the it's way pulled. the stripes have pulled it's been great yeah so I'm I think hoping. the recipient is going to be very happy with it. I'm hoping so. And then I've also finished my Blacker Pod Cow pattern. So I knit the Undertone Scarf by Tin Can Knits in their Mad Colour book in Blacker's Cornish Tin 2 in Dalcoth Turquoise mm-hmm. and Ding Dong Purple. Or is it the other way around? I don't know. You're the one that knit it. <laughs> it well, looks I fab. knit it in purple and in turquoise. turquoise. And it's looking fab. Oh, it's so warm. I finished it just before cold snap. So I started wearing it to work. It's so warm. And it's a really nice pattern as well. Like It's quite chill mm. to knit. So I'm going to be wearing that to EYF to nice. get my 15% off at the Blacker Yarn stall. Very nice. So people who participated in the Blacker podcast, which ends on the 4th of March... Remember to wear your yep. FO to the stall to get your discount. Okay? Yep. Good advice. <laughs> and we both yes, had an FO. Yep, so I don't doubt that you guys have seen this. There have been some very specific looking pink hats that have been knitted since the announcement of a very significant election overseas. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, both Pip and I decided that you know we wanted to join in i wouldn't say that this podcast is ever going to be overly political that's not our aim really is it pip no however we do both identify as feminists yes we do in all honesty i don't see how you can't Mm. on a personal basis you know equality it's yeah no brainer really yeah it's a no brainer but we have we both had a day where we were feeling a little bit frustrated and down with the world because obviously there was lots of stuff going on not just in the US as well but you know stuff going on here stuff going on in the rest of the world too and you know sometimes you do feel frustrated and sometimes you just need to get it out so yeah and as other podcasters before has quite rightly said you know crafting yes it can be like a relaxing thing but it's also a very subversive activity depending Mm -hmm. on what you do with it you know there are a group of craftivists out there and yeah we decided you know we were gonna basically have a day of feminist ranting yeah and knitting our pussy hats yep 
So, yeah, we need some pussy hats. <laughs> yeah, we did. And it was really good to have a good It was cathartic. Vent. Yes. So I initially didn't have any pink Aaron yarn, and then I deconstructed a previous project mm-hmm. and decided to put my yarn to better use. So I now have a pussy hat in Ginger's hand-dyed humming Aaron in the Hot Fuzz colourway. And mine I knit in Ginger's hand-dyed super sheep Aaron in the Cowgirl boots colourway, which I actually won at Warm and Working. Yep. So... so- that was actually Good super use. awesome. I also have a skein of rainbow heirloom in the birthday suit yeah. that I'm thinking what I'm going to do is hold it double and That'd knit myself good. another one as well. Because, you know, if a certain tangerine person decides they're going to come to Scotland, uh, I want to be ready. No comment. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's about yeah. as political as we're going to get, I think. Yeah, <laughs> basically. But on another note, I've got to be honest, I have been really disappointed seeing lots of horrific comments and rudeness and things on Rav. Mm. I'm very much of the opinion that if you can't say anything nice just don't say it at all. Mm. And no one's forcing you to look at, you know, knitted penis warmers or crocheted anatomically correct vaginas. Yeah. And no, same way no one is forcing you to click on, you know, specific politician shaped voodoo dolls or illusion knitting scarves. Mm-hmm. You know. And I just think, just leave it alone. Mm. You know, I don't agree with a lot of things. And yeah, okay, there are some scenarios where, you know, you do have to speak out and say things, but other times it's just not productive to anybody involved. I guess what you're really saying is don't seek it out, just start. I think what I'm saying basically is don't open up a document or a program or, you know, a project on RAV and say the first thing that comes to your mind, such as I hope you get arthritis. Hmm. You know, you're not helping anyone. We should be like, you know, uniting and... Yeah. getting on with life rather than being silly yeah so it would be nice yeah. to not have to worry about trolls yes basically <laughs> but yeah beyond that we have our pussy hats and we're very proud of them yeah and they're warm as hell oh yeah <laughs> in this weather oh god so, yeah yeah but and yeah. they're in the best colour known to man which is pink pink is great I think they might be my first ever pink FO yeah well I suppose it's kind of ready pink Mm. but the rainbow wireling if I make one rainbow wireling yeah. it will be pink and I think that yeah. might actually be my first ever pink because I'm not a big pink person no, whereas I am <laughs> <laughs> which is why we like compliment each other so well oh god yes <laughs> we're the best but moving um, on from that yep <laughs> this is a said just a little bit of a pre Edinburgh Yarn Festival episode yep we are going to be there Indeed we are, and specifically what bit are we going to be at, Pip? So we're going to be at the podcast lounge at the meetup between 1 and 2pm on the Friday and the Saturday. You are absolutely welcome to come and say hello. There's going to be loads of podcasters there, I think. Um, yep. Louise Scully of Net British, who yep. has kind of been organising it. Yep, and she gave us a fantastic shout out on one of her more recent episodes, yes. so big thank you, Louise. She said that there's something like 40-odd Podcasters. podcasters that are coming yeah. so I'm really excited there are a few podcasters in there I listen to and or watch yeah. and I'm quite looking forward to saying hello to and I'm going to have to try and be not like be not, not a fangirl like, oh my goodness <laughs> this is so because <laughs> I'm ridiculous yeah and I have social anxiety so oh, I tend to be a little bit OTT so the thing is fun. though like Obviously, like, nonsense happening on Ravelry aside, crafters generally are a lovely, lovely community. Yes. So I don't think anybody is going to be like, oh, my God, you freak. Why do you listen to me? <laughs> How dare you listen to me? You are banned from listening to my podcast. Well, that's the thing. Like, of all of the people, in, of all of the fandoms or communities that I could possibly really be worried about, knitting is not one of them. Yeah. Like... Um, knitting is all the knitting community is amazing so i know that i don't really have to worry about being an absolute idiot yeah so it'll be Um, fine i'm pretty sure in the past you know when we've met people we've not made complete muppets of ourselves no instead we record ourselves and then put it on the internet so you guys can hear it whenever you like yeah (laughs) so instead of being like you know oh my god just even was there we didn't and then and the episode afterwards i was like oh my god yeah so it's fine (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, we're really, really excited about being part of the um, Black Eons Podcast Lounge. Yes. We're looking forward to meeting other podcasters, and we're looking forward to meeting you guys as well. Yeah. Because um, that's the other thing. Pitt messaged me a couple of weeks ago being like, did you realise people actually listen to us? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes Sia will message me and be like, wait, 
what? Yeah, I mean, not gonna, yeah, not gonna lie, guys. I did at one point wonder if it was just maybe like a couple of our friends and Pip's mum in law listening to us. Hello, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just waved at the microphone, not that you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Because yeah, Pip was like, we've had like 170 listens to this one episode, and I was kind of like. Either we've actually had 170 people listen to us, or there is one really, really dedicated person out there. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, like if you guys are listening to us and you're at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, please do come say hi to us. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to meet you. We'll have little lanyards on that say who we are, so you I can know. come up and you can poke us and be like, I listen to your podcast. That would be cool. Or, alternatively, what the flip were you guys drinking last week? <laughs> you know, whatever. So we don't mind, but yeah, I'm mega excited about the lanyards. Yeah. Having done things like Fresh is Helping and that, I am a bit of a lanyard obsessive. I'm just like, oh my god, lanyard. (laughs) Yes, Um, it's very official. So yeah, mega excited about that. But obviously there are other things going to be going on Mm -hmm. at um, Edinburgh Yarn Fest as well that we are very, very keen to go and see. Um, We're obviously not going to mention everyone because that would take forever. Yeah, so... Blanket rule, we are super, super excited to see everyone. Yes. Um, smush all their yarn. I'm pretty much just going to like work my way around the room and just be like, poke that yarn, poke that yarn, poke that yarn, poke that yarn. Say Buy hello. some yarn. <laughs> yes. A um, project bag. Yes. Good plan. So Pip, what are you looking forward to? And what are you hoping to acquire while we're there? So I, I don't have anything specifically that I'm looking to acquire, mm-hmm. but the ones I'm really excited about um, this is in alphabetical order because I did go through the list. Uh, Black Bat <laughs> Rare Yarns. I didn't buy anything from them last year. Mm-hmm. This year I'm definitely going to because yay breeds. Yes. Um, I'm super excited about that. Blacker Yarns, obviously. Yep. They're awesome. Their yarn is awesome. I've got quite a lot of their yarn, a lot of their breeds yarn, and I'm just looking forward to having a good smush. Yeah, you can't go wrong with good old Blacker Yarns. Yeah. I have, in fact, got all of, all of their shade cards up on my up on my bookcase as decoration yeah and uh, you've got more in front of what are the ones in front of me the ones in front the are jameson and smith yeah yeah if you guys are looking for things to do with your um shade cards i can having witnessed pip's flat recommend them as decoration yeah it's a good way to see everything also good color inspiration yes i'm looking forward to cambrian mountains will garthenor yep. who i follow on instagram Daughter of a Shepherd. I didn't buy any last year. I really regret not buying any last year. Someone took a picture of me and Heather smelling it. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they did. <laughs> but I don't know what happened to that photograph. <laughs> yeah, so that's a thing. I forgot that about that photo. Yeah, but I'm looking forward it to it. It was a nice one, though. Yeah. Let's see if you can find it. Because I'm looking for maybe some more semi solids and solids, yeah. greys and blacks. So, Daughter of a Shepherd, black, solid, yum. Yeah, and I feel like I've seen somewhere that she's doing some new clips and there's possibly a full play. We'll have to have Maybe. a Maybe. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what's going on. There's Home Ranch, Wensleydales, Jameson's of Shetland, mm-hmm. oh, of course. Martin's Lab, really looking forward yes. to it. Yes. I think I had, I think I got a business card from them last year because I found one in my pocket once. That's really um, random because that yeah. was before. Um, I think that was when they were maybe ramping up. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward. They released some pictures of some like mini scheme oh, sets. Oh, they are so cute. Oh my goodness, I think I might need some. I don't know what I'm gonna use. Have you even used your knitting goddess ones from No, last but year? I have plans. Oh. I have plans. What are the plans? We'll see. We'll see you don't have plans. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> I've seen someone is designing someone is designing a shawl that is not out yet that uses a gradient set. Oh, how interesting. So um, yeah. Um, <laughs> really? Is that, is that your last word on that? <laughs> Rusty Ferret, of course. Oh, this year's yes. Flower Stall, it's so exciting. Sharing with Little Grey Girl. Yes, because last year Leona was roaming, yes. taking photos and things, and we got to see her a couple of times, but this time she's going to be on a stall. I know, can't wait. It's so exciting. And, you know, we're Little Grey Girls, so not only can we buy our yarn, we can then buy a project bag to put it in. Yay! I'm so, you know, so best many, of both worlds. So many project bags. Yeah. I need many project bags. I do not have enough. <laughs> and looking forward to Shetland Handspun um, the Icelandic knitter yep. Helena Magnuson I really like her stuff I've yep. made a couple of her patterns I love Iceland I'm super jealous of the tours that she does I really want to go oh gosh yes and I want to show my hapisk because I put a lot of hours into that that is fair and I think in March like it'll be the right weather for you to just wear that and not a jacket or anything yeah it's not like you'll be outside yeah there's also the Sky Sheila Stair shop yep Uist Wool 
Uridale, who mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to. I follow them on Instagram. Also, Wendy's Yarn Balls, because yes. I got a yarn ball from Wendy last year, and it is so beautiful. Yes. So beautiful, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think she does buttons and pins as well, so nice. I might need to get some of those. Sia, so, yeah, you have a couple of things you're looking forward to. Yes. So, the first thing I'm looking forward to is picking up my copy of Wool Tribe. Um, unlike Pip, I decided to collect mine while I'm there. So looking forward to getting my hands on that. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Mm -hmm. Apparently I'm on a bit of a book kick because I'm also very much looking forward to going to the old main ant stand. So those of you that follow Lilith on Instagram and Twitter and just generally, you know, shop with her and that, she has got a book coming out called Coming Home, celebrating her 10th anniversary. Wow. And there's some amazing patterns and mm-hmm. designers in there. That You know, there's um, Isolde, Rachel Coopy, there's a recipe from Clara Parks. So I am very, very excited to be picking my copy of that up. And I'll probably get a couple of skeins of yarn so I can knit a good shawl or three out of that yes. while I'm there. What else am I looking forward to? <laughs> La bien aimée. So I got a bit obsessed last year, as you guys all remember. And a year on, that obsession is still here. Yes. <laughs> I just love her yarn. I never thought I'd enjoy knitting with a merino single so much, but it just knits up beautifully. Mm-hmm. And oh my goodness, the way she dyes the yarn, gorgeous. Rusty Ferret, obviously. Can't wait to see the owner stand. I'm also looking forward to the Loop of London still being there as well. Yes, I hear um, so much about them yes. all the time. So I'm actually sat here working away on my Find Your Fade shawl, and I'm using one of their Mad Tosh colorways. It's an exclusive London Cosmopolitan. Mm-hmm. So it'll be nice to get my hands on some Mad Tosh, but I think they're also possibly going to have some other yarn dyes and things on the stand too. Nice. So yeah, very much looking forward to that. I've also never actually managed to get anything from Knitting Goddess. <gasps> I know, which really surprised me. I was going through my stash and I was like, I've actually never had anything from Knitting Goddess. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make that one of my missions this year to get something from her. And I'm also looking forward to the Pom Pom Press stall being there because they've just published Interpretations Volume 4 by Vera Valimaki and Hohi Locatelli. Mm -hmm. And there are some beautiful patterns in there. So I think I'm possibly going to be on a bit of a book kick this year. Getting myself some knitting literature. Ha ha! There's nothing quite like a printed book. I know. And the other thing is, since I finally got my bookcases over at my new flat, Mm-hmm. I've actually found that all of my books fit on one bookcase. <gasps> so I've got an entire set of bookshelves that are empty. So oh. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tempting. I know. So I think it would be criminal of me not to fill it with knitting stuff. Agreed. You know, so there we and go. you know, buying books is completely different to buying yarn. Exactly. So yeah, that's my plans. That's what I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. So obviously. I'm going to be picking up my copy of Wool Tribe, but Pip actually had hers delivered in advance. I did, I did. If you can get your hands on a copy, I know that the advance options all sold out, I think. But if you can get your hands on a copy, do it. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's got patterns from Francesca Hughes, Donna Smith, Renee Callahan, Claire Devine, Jane Crowfoot and Amanda B. Collins. And they're gorgeous and yeah. lovely. And some of the fantastic yarns which will be on sale at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, no less. Yes, there are also some cool articles in there. There's yeah. one about machine knitting. There's one about just generally the knitting community being awesome. Yeah. A walk about around Arthur's seat. Yeah. There's just so much. in. There's also some great adverts in there. So yeah. it means that you can find people that you may necessarily never have heard of before. Additional or... inspiration. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous. And it's just um, a beautiful book to hold in your hands as well. So... Yeah, super glossy yeah. and lovely. Love a good glossy page book. It's good good size as well it doesn't overwhelm you but it's not tiny so you can actually read it properly you can have it in your bag on the bus with your knitting yeah and just generally as well with edinburgh yarn festival the tickets are all sold out yep tickets for the kaylee are all sold out so that's that's that one done there are other kayleys going on in edinburgh that night it's it's scotland we're always kayleying but in terms of actually the tickets if you haven't if you didn't manage to get advanced tickets be on the door early door opens at 10 just try and be there early so you don't end up missing out on the fun um if you're still planning on coming but it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be amazing and absolutely don't panic if you have any queries or questions uh joe and mika have put an faq section about the tickets and things on the website Mm -hmm. so what i'd suggest is maybe going and checking that out Mm -hmm. again just to get the proper like full skinny on tickets and things like that yeah and i would also suggest yep don't rely on there being an atm there yeah that's a good point actually and don't rely on everyone being able to take card payments 
yeah i mean obviously vendors are a lot better because they're like paypal apps and things like yeah. that but there will be quite a few people there and we are next to a big asda mm-hmm. but again because there's a lot of us yeah make sure you've got some spare cash like yeah you know just in case of emergencies and that yeah that is something that i learned the hard way last year yes <laughs> but it's gonna be amazing even if you can't make it you know you can still join in and look at all the fun on instagram and twitter and yep. and all of that we'll be likely posting on our accounts throughout the day so mm-hmm. if you want to follow us on instagram i'm at miss C- miss underscore sia kate and i am ramsey underscore baggins and that's ramsey with an a ramsey <laughs> ramsey underscore baggins <laughs> not ramsey um, on instagram <laughs> but that's that for now we will be back with probably a bumper episode yes. afterwards it might be a couple of weeks afterwards there's a lot going yep. on in march march is a crazy crazy time of the year for me yeah it's um, crazy time for you. i'm turning 26 oh yeah <gasps> exciting i'm not gonna be in my i'm not gonna be you know in my mid-20s i'm actually gonna be like my no, no. mid-20s 26 still is mid it's fine i'm turning 27 this year yeah that's true <laughs> sucks to be you i always <laughs> said when i was a kid i'm gonna have a baby by the time i'm 27 no you're kidding me i said i'd be i'd be out of school by now and i'm still at university <laughs> 27 seems like so grown up when you're 16 yeah and now i'm like uh-oh nope nope still no <laughs> but basically all i'm getting out of this is i'm gonna have birthday money at every yarn fest and it's gonna be glorious oh, amazing so yeah guys come and yes. wish ha- come and wish see a happy birthday if you see us no you don't have to do that honestly <laughs> <laughs> but that that's kind of everything we have yeah. for this episode and hopefully we will see you there yep can't wait but yeah that's all good. i say is bye and thanks as ever for listening all however many of you are or you know our one dedicated listener we appreciate it thank you thank you (laughs) bye guys bye